from 42 Visionary Way. You're tuned in to the winner of 3120 Show of the Year, Dispatch Hope, starring your hosts, Silo and Nova. Thanks for tuning in to Dispatch Hope. Here on the show, we take some of our viewers' most hopeless situations and we send out hope to their future memory banks. But this is no ordinary talk show. We're using some of the year's most advanced technology so that viewers can not only hear about hope, but see into their bright and exciting futures. We've been dishing out hope on the air for the last 10 years. And in that time, we've been able to help over 7,000 people become pros in flashing forward. It's always so exciting when we get to help someone believe that God will do good things as they pray, remember, and obey. Pro, during each episode of the show, we have different segments, and one of those is called Five Second Rule. You heard that right. We're flashing back to one of the most popular games from the 2000s. This is a game that anyone can play, and it's super fun. We'll put a category up on the screen, and you'll see how many things in that category you can name in five seconds. Are you ready? Here we go. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Speaking of art supplies, take a look at what I made backstage during that segment. Wow, that looks interesting. There are so many exciting things happening around here at Hope Headquarters, but the most exciting is when we get to help someone believe that God will do good things. Oh, hey, it looks like we got a call coming to us via hover mail. I can't wait to help someone else become a pro. Let's check it out. Hey there, Dispatch Hope friends. My name is Gemma, and I wanted to see if you guys could help me out here. My grandma is really sick, and the doctors are saying it doesn't look too good. I'm so scared of what's going to happen to her. I really don't want to lose my grandma, because she's basically my best friend. We do everything together. Is there anything I can do in this situation? Wow, it sounds like this viewer's hope is running really low. We're going to need a good bit of P-R-O. In case this is your first time tuning in, I want to make sure you know what we're talking about here. P-R-O is our futuristic formula that has proven to fill us and many others with hope. But before we go pro, we always take the time to flash back to God's Word. Even though the technology is very advanced these days, there's one tool that remains timeless, and that's the Bible. A long time ago, they used to read the Bible on this stuff called paper. That made up what our ancestors called books. But these days, we have a way of flashing back in time and watching the Bible come to life in a brand new way. Here on the show, we're testing out the latest patching technology for the very first time. We're not quite sure if this will work, but we're going to see if we can show you what we're seeing. Okay, I'm getting word from our producers that the audience has been patched in. Yes, it's working. Accessing the story of Paul. Story successfully loaded. Meet Paul a follower of Jesus who wrote most of the books we read in the New Testament. Many of these books were actually letters to people, telling them about Jesus and his love for them. Paul wasn't always someone who told people about Jesus, though. He was once known for hating anyone who followed Jesus. Paul would even throw Christians in jail or run them out of town to other cities. One day, a bright light burst through the sky, and a voice started speaking to Paul. It was Jesus and he gave Paul some instructions. Paul did what Jesus said to do, but when he got up, he couldn't see anything. So for three whole days, Paul prayed until a man named Ananias came to see him. Ananias placed his hands on Paul, and immediately he could see again. Now Paul believed in Jesus, so he got up and was baptized. From then on, Paul never forgot how Jesus changed him that day. He began writing letters to groups of people around the world because he wanted everyone to know about Jesus' love and how they could have a relationship with him. One of the letters Paul wrote to the Romans was about God's promise to save every person on earth who believed and trusted in him. Paul wanted everyone to know the hope they could have because of God's promises. 
So he taught the people to remember how God has always been a promise maker and a promise keeper. In his letter, Paul told them to remember a promise that God made to a man named Abraham many years ago. We can read about this promise in the Old Testament part of the Bible. When Abraham was 75 years old, God promised to give him more children than he would be able to count. For 25 long years, Abraham had faith and believed that God would keep his promise. Even when Abraham and his wife were 99 years old, he still remembered God's promise and had hope that God was going to do good things. Then, when Abraham was 100, his son Isaac was born. When Abraham had no reason to hope for children, he believed that God could do anything he promised to do. And God did. Flash forward. Thousands of years later, sure enough, in God's perfect timing, Abraham did become the father of many nations, filled with hundreds and thousands of people. Abraham had hope because he was sure that God loved him and would keep his promise, which is exactly what Paul wanted the Romans to remember. He wanted everyone he wrote to, including us, because we still read his letters in the Bible today, to never forget that God will give us hope as we remember his promises. It never gets old watching the Bible come to life like that. Flashing back to God's word helps us to become pros at hope. Now it's time for us to take Gemma's situation and run it through our prototype, or as we like to call it, pro. P-R-O stands for pray, remember, obey. Just like Gemma, there were times when Paul and Abraham were feeling hopeless. They each found themselves in pretty tough situations. But let's show Gemma in our audience how Paul and Abraham went pro. Computer, access the prototype for hope. As you can see, the formula that Paul and Abraham followed was this, pray, remember, obey. Paul and Abraham each prayed to God. Paul prayed when he couldn't see, while Abraham prayed and asked God to give him and his wife a child. Absolutely. Paul and Abraham weren't sure how everything was going to turn out, so they had to remember all the promises that God had made them. Paul did this by writing letters and encouraging others to remember too. And even while Abraham waited 25 years for what God promised him, he never forgot that promise. Instead, he remembered and believed it was all going to happen, just like God said. And last, but definitely not least, Paul and Abraham obeyed God. Even though it looked a little different for each of them, they both obeyed by doing what God said was right. Everybody, say this after me. God gives me hope. God gives me hope. As I remember. As I remember. His promises. His promises. Great job. When we are waiting for something, we can remember God's promises by reading His Word, thanking Him for all the great things He's done for us, and thinking about His promise of heaven where everything is going to be perfect one day. And that can be true for Gemma if she goes pro like Paul and Abraham did. This is my new favorite latest and greatest technology breakthrough called the Future Memory Bank. This is where we can send our memories to the future for the next time we need hope. When we apply the PRO formula to what Gemma sent us and upload it to her future memories, we'll get to flash forward and hear what her life could look like 10 years in the future. Hey computer, access Future Memory Bank. Hey there, Future Gemma here, coming to you from the Future Memory Bank. I made it to where I am today thanks to your PRO formula all those years back. My grandma and I were able to make a few more memories before she passed away. One of the memories we made was when I sat beside her hospital bed and talked to her about God's promise of heaven. She told me that because she had been following Jesus since she was a young girl, she was excited about living forever in heaven. She told me about how God promises that heaven is going to be amazing. So when she died, I didn't cry tears of sadness. I actually smiled a lot because I knew she was in a much better, happier place and she wasn't sick anymore. After talking to her about heaven, I decided to follow Jesus too. And now I think about God's promise of heaven every single day because you guys taught me that I can pray and ask God for help, remember his promises and obey his words. Things are looking really good here in 3130. Thanks again, and keep helping others go pro. Flashing back to you guys, Future Gemma, out. Wow, I can't wait for our viewer to see their life 10 years from now. God is going to do good things in their future, all because of pro. Praying, remembering, and obeying will help them to have hope. God gives us all hope, 
And when we put any circumstance through the proven PRO formula, we'll find ourselves being sure that God will do good things. Now, another thing we can do to fill ourselves with hope is to remember the promises of God by singing a worship song. When we sing worship songs, we're not just saying words to music. We're actually helping ourselves remember that God's promises are for us every day. In this next song, we're going to be singing all about how God has our future under control, and that gives us hope. Let's sing. In times of trouble I will wait My hope is in you, God I can obey Remember what you say I will pray My hope is in you A future I can't see I flash forward and believe I am sure you will come through You make things good, you always do A future I can't see I flash forward and believe I'm sure you will come through You make things good, you always do I'm happy I'm happy Because of the hope The hope, the hope that I have I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy Because of the hope The hope, the hope that I have I'm happy, happy, happy Because of the hope I love that song. It's such a great way to remember that we may not see it yet, but God is working and that gives us hope. Well, it looks like we're out of time on our show for today. If today's the first time you've tuned in, we always end our show by praying to God. Everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's all talk to God together right now. Dear God, thank you for giving us hope. We are sure that you will do good things for us because you love us. In every situation we face, Help us pray, remember, and obey. We love you so much. Amen. And with that, we're signing off. Thanks for tuning in.